In this video, I am demonstrating how to connect a serial port device to an Android phone. So for this, we need to have a serial to USB adapter, uh, which is this right over here. And as you can see, um, this converts a USB device, or sorry, a USB port um, into a serial port connector. The serial port connector is called the DB9. This is what used to be on the old laptops, which don't exist anymore. So um, this just converts any USB port to a DB9 connector. Now, um, in order to connect this serial port to your board, you need another adapter. And this one happens to be one that we make in our group. And this is a DB9 female connector and as you can see we have a little um, serial level shifter chip on here which then converts this um, to uh, 5 volt 0 to 5 volt level or 0 to 3 volt level depending on um, what what power rail you use and this is what you use to connect to your actual circuit board in this case uh, to illustrate we are using a Raspberry Pi, but you can use anything that puts out serial data. And this Raspberry Pi um, is already pre-programmed to put out serial data on, a, on certain specific pins that are designated right here. And you can see down here from this diagram that the serial port pins, the UART pins, um, are pins uh, 2, 3, Four, well, actually, the way it's numbered here, be 4, 6, 8, and 10. And those are the four pins that we will be using and connecting to this little adapter. Now, since the phone doesn't have this USB type A, we need another adapter. This works fine on your laptop if um, your, your laptop has a regular type A uh, connector, but otherwise you will need some other adapter. And for phones, for newer phones, or even some laptops that now have uh, USB-C, you can use something like this. So this has a USB-C connector on one end, and on the other end it has a USB type A female. So there's the female that connects to this um, other cable. And um, it's important that you use a, a cable that supports USB on the go. So sometimes that's known as USB OTG. OTG means on the go. And what that means is that um, USB generally has four pins, but there's a fifth pin. And that fifth pin, uh, when it's connected, that fifth pin is what indicates to the device whether it's a host or a client. In this case, we're going to be using the phone as a host, and the phone is going to provide power to this device. For example, when you plug your phone into a laptop, in that case, the phone is a USB client and it's being powered by the laptop. So the laptop's the host and the phone is the, is the client. So now we can hook up everything and just demonstrate how it works. Okay, for this demonstration, we're going to be using a serial port app that I found in the Play Store, the Google Play Store. This one is by somebody named Kai Morich. And uh, this is a nice app because it gives you a variety of settings, but you can use uh, other ones if you have access to them. Okay, to start, I'm going to click on the app and it opens up here. Um, looks like this. There's nothing connected to the phone yet, but you can take a look at the settings. It lets you choose which type of USB device or which, which USB device you want to connect to. And you can also change the settings on your serial port. In this particular case, we're going to be using this baud rate. Um, actually, it's not set yet, so I'm going to, I need to set this to 115, 200 is what I want. Um, and the standard is generally eight data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. That's, that's sort of normal for all serial ports, um, but you can change that if you need to. And we want no flow control. There's no flow control set up, so that's fine. So if you see flow control, you, ge you generally want to turn that off unless you're using some sort of a handshaking like request to send or clear to send. Those are other serial port pins that can be connected to the DB9 connector in some cases. But if you're just using the standard, just four pins, 
you want to turn flow control off. Okay, now the next thing you do is you plug in the cable with the device into the phone. Okay, like this. And sometimes it gives you a message, um, but in this case it did not. But I want to check to see if the phone properly detected the device. So I'm going to go here, look at USB devices, and as you can see, it says there is a device here, but it is unknown. That means that it doesn't know which driver to use. So it will not work unless it's using the right driver. So what you do is you click on it. And one of the things I like about this specific program is it gives you a choice of drivers to use. These are the most common ones. One of the popular ones that are used are um, FTDI. So there's a lot of FTDI serial converters. But in this case, I am using a serial port dongle cable made by IO Gear, and I happen to know that IO Gear uses the CDC driver, and that is sometimes shows up as a prolific technology, which you can see it says up here. So I'm going to choose the CDC driver, like that, and then we can just click on OK. Um, yep, and now we can go back. So now if I take a look at the USB devices, it says custom CDC device. So it's using the CDC driver. And now I can go back. So on the main screen, um, you know, every app is different, but this app happens to have this little button for making a connection. So if I, if I click on it, it'll connect. But as you can see, you know, if I do that, it turns on, so it powers on the serial port, and it, and it says, do you want to use this USB device for serial? Do you want it to be your default device? So I usually leave that unchecked because I don't want it to be the default, and I just click OK. So now it's connected, and now it's actually running, and we can see down here, connected to CDC device. But we don't see anything because there's nothing connected. So what I usually like to do is I disconnect, and then, and then I connect my device, and then I reconnect. OK, now as you can see here, I have my serial cable now connected to my test device, connected to the right pins. You want to make sure that you, you connect the right pins so you don't accidentally blow up the board or, or burn anything out or short anything out. Um, so the serial data is flowing. And I like this particular cable because the light blinks when there's serial data flowing. That helps for debugging sometimes. So now um, I can go ahead and connect. So I connect. And now we see the data flowing down here. So I'm sending out data packets from my board. And they're being received on the phone. If you get some data and it looks like uh, some garbage characters, um, that generally means that you don't have a good connection or it means that you're using the wrong baud rate. So you, you can then go back into this. First you disconnect and then you go back into the settings and you can change the baud rate and then you can reconnect and try again. But uh, when it works, you know, it kind of looks like this. And when you're done, you can click disconnect. And that's about it.